Hello friends. Let me first welcome you all to our lecture series on the subject internal combustion engines and gas turbines. Today in this series, we are going to discuss about the abnormal combustion or knocking combustion happening in SI engines. Initially, we will be discussing about the process of normal combustion happening followed by abnormal combustion in SI engines. We will be also discussing about the effects of abnormal combustion in SI engines and the factors needed to be controlled in order to avoid the knocking in SI engines. So let us start. So for this first let us discuss about the process of combustion in SI engines. So what is combustion? Combustion is basically we know hydrocarbon fuel burning in the air that is consuming oxygen in order to form carbon dioxide and water. Ideally speaking this is a combustion process and this results in liberation of the heat. So we have here the fuel, we have the oxygen from the air and the products of combustion are carbon dioxide and water along with the heat, the result of combustion. In order to happen this particular combustion process in a very proper manner, we have some requirements that has to be satisfied. So the first requirement is the presence of combustible mixture. Here we mean to say that the mixture whatever is going to be supplied to the SI engine should be within the inflammability limit because we know the mixture in SI engine is able to burn only if it is within the inflammability limit. If it is either leaner side or on the richer side it is unable to burn. So it is very essential that we supply a mixture which is within the inflammability limit not richer or not too leaner. Now after supplying this mixture we need to have some mean of combustion. So we have to ignite that particular mixture and for that we have what we call as spark plugs used in SI engine. So the spark plug along with the ignition system is going to provide a spark and this particular spark is going to burn the mixture uh, wherever the spark is being produced. So the spark plug is going to work as a mean for ignition. Then once the spark is going to form then we have to uh, ensure that the flame is going to travel throughout the combustion chamber consuming all the fuel. So here in order to ensure that the flame is going to tra travel throughout the combustion chamber the, the type of combustion chamber is very, playing a very important role. So depending on the type of combustion chamber the efficiency of the flame propagation is going to be decided. Also, in order to ensure that all the fuel and air present inside the combustion chamber is going to be burned, we had to ensure that the flame, whatever is going to be there, uh, is going to travel with a proper velocity. The combustion chamber design is proper. The size of the combustion chamber is proper. The spark plug location is also important. So all these parameters are going to ensure whether all the air and fuel is going to be consumed properly. So this is uh, what generally supposed to be the requirements of a proper combustion combustion process and now let us uh, discuss how the normal combustion is happening in the uh, combustion chamber of SI engines. We know that a homogeneous mixture is being supplied and we want to ensure that this particular mixture whatever is being supplied to the combustion chamber is going to be in a uh, controlled manner. So in a controlled manner means we here we have three stages of combustion what we call as the ignition lag, flame propagation stage and the third is after burning stage. So let us see what is happening in the first stage. At point A, we are giving a spark. Uh, piston is moving towards the top dead center. At A, we are giving a spark and the spark given is going to burn the mixture region around the spark and that particular nucleus is going to be converted into a full fledged flame. And this is what is happening uh, between A to B which we call as ignition lag. Second stage is your flame propagation stage and what is happening in the flame propagation stage? In the flame propagation stage whatever flame has been developed in the first stage is going to travel from the spark uh, plug region to all the corners of the combustion chamber. So the flame is going to travel throughout the combustion chamber in a very uniform manner and consuming all the fuel and resulting in the peak temperature. And whenever the peak temperature reaches C, uh, your second stage is going to uh, end. So and the third stage is now the burning stage. And what is happening in this after burning stage? Whatever the uh, mixture uh, here and there remaining in some dead pockets which are unable to burn during second stage is going to burn. So that is what we call as after burning stage or third stage of combustion and all these things are going to happen in a very smooth manner and that is why generally we know that uh, the petrol engines generally work very smoother. 
and this is what we call as the normal combustion in SI engines. Now let us see what is the abnormal combustion in SI engines. So here what is shown is the normal combustion and here what we are seeing is the abnormal combustion happening. So how is a normal combustion happening? Uh, we know that a mixture is being supplied, homogeneous mixture is being supplied to the combustion chamber of uh, SI engines and we have a spark plug located in this region. Now whenever this spark is given over here the nucleus is being formed in this particular region and slowly this particular nucleus is being developed into a flame front so a full fledged flame is being formed and this particular uh, flame front is going to travel throughout the combustion chamber away from the spark plug so this is what is going to happen uh, let us understand what is the flame front so flame front is that particular boundary here you can see this is the flame front in this side of this particular flame front we have what is on burn mixture and what is on this side it is the burn mixture so as the flame front moves from the spark plug to the other corners it consumes the fuel in the mixture and produces burnt gases so it is leaving behind the burnt gases which are gases basically so the volume of the gases are going to be higher on the back side of your flame front so here the pressure is going to be higher and due to this particular higher pressure the flame front is going to be pushed with a higher and higher pressure at as it is going to travel that is towards the other end what is happening as a result of this the result is that uh, as the flame is traveling uh, from this uh, point to here the end mixture over is more and more getting compressed so when the mixture is getting compressed more and more the temperature of the uh, end mixture is going to increase and when the temperature of the end mixture is increasing and reaching self ignition temperature then it is the probability that it is going to burn so first it has to reach a self ignition temperature and then the mixture is going to remain over there in this particular stage of self ignition temperature for some amount of time and uh, time corresponds to delay period so we know that what is delay period it is the time where the nucleus is going to be converted into a full fledged flame so here some nucleus will form and that will be converted into a flame so that is what we call as a delay period and if you allow that particular mixture to stay over there for the delay period then a new flame starts in this particular region that is the other end of the combustion chamber and that starts traveling in the opposite direction so one flame is traveling from the spark plug towards the other end while from the other end a new flame starts traveling in the opposite direction and this particular two flame fronts are going to collide and this produce a huge noise and this is what we call as the knocking or abnormal combustion in SI engine. Obviously uh, when we say knocking the huge noise is there that is your firing becomes more rough. So in a normal combustion the engine uh, is running smoother while in a knocking combustion the rough firing is the indication that the knocking is happening inside the combustion chamber this is the, the difference so basically here uh, in normal combustion it was the flame was traveling very smoothly and the flame was reaching the other end of the combustion chamber consuming all the fuel while here what is happening in the abnormal combustion the flame is traveling and due to the traveling of the frame the end mixture is reaching self ignition temperature a new flame is being generated and it is traveling in the opposite direction and the two flame fronts are colliding resulting in a huge noise which we call as knocking so let us see what are the effects of this knocking the effects of knocking uh, so basically this is your normal combustion and this is your abnormal combustion as we know the two flames are colliding over here so there was no second flame in the normal combustion but in abnormal combustion there is a second flame and it is traveling in the opposite direction and these two flames collide over here resulting in huge noise and vibration so the first uh, effect is noise and vibration and due to this particular vibration what happens this vibrations are transmitted to the engine parts and the damage is going to be there so uh, thermal stresses are going to be introduced into the different parts due to the vibration happening due to the knocking so mechanical damage of the different parts related to combustion chamber is going to happen now along with this uh, due to this particular 
knocking combustion the fuel molecules inside the combustion chamber they are undergoing huge pressure and the two molecules which were uh, far away are coming nearer and they are combining together and this particular bigger droplets are unable to burn and that results in the formation of carbon deposits so carbon deposits are there when preferably the knocking is happening inside the combustion chamber now along with this particular what is happening here due to the knocking that is two flame fronts are colliding and they are resulting in the vibration the turbulence inside the combustion chamber is increasing and due to this high turbulence inside the gases inside the combustion chamber large amount of heat is being transferred to the combustion chamber walls so heat transfer losses are going to increase when the knocking is going to happen and whenever the huge amount of heat is going to be transferred basically the heat was there to be converted into work but the, that particular heat has been now transferred to the walls and therefore more since more heat is being transferred to the walls the decrease in the power output is going to be the result and since the power output is decreasing uh, obviously the thermal efficiency of this particular engine is going to decrease and one more very important effect is that uh, pre ignition now in, uh, in order to understand what is this pre ignition so basically when the flame travels over here and uh, second flames here and then we have a collision over here resulting in a huge uh, noise and temperature along with the high pressure and temperature the different parts in this particular region are now going to have higher temperature temperature reaches to a high, such higher value that this particular parts at a higher temperature remain at higher temperature even in the next cycle and in the next cycle the, when the, the new mixture comes before your spark plug gives the spark the hot parts are going to burn the mixture and a new flame is going to start so that is what is called as a pre-ignition pre-ignition means burning the mixture before the spark plug is uh, giving the spark the hot part which is there for example the some corner of a spark plug or some other uh, edge of the piston or any other part which is remaining hot is going to act as a nucleus uh, for starting the flame and uh, this will result in uh, causing a new flame so flame is being started by a hot part then a flame will start from uh, due to spark plug and the two flame will collide and this will result again in knocking so what is happening a chain reaction is happening that is due to knocking there is pre-ignition and due to pre-ignition there is knocking so this is very important so this results in a very bad uh, condition that is a very rough uh, firing of the engine if the uh, pre-ignition is going to happen in the case of abnormal combustion so these are the effects of combustion so now let us discuss what all things are necessary to control the you know, abnormal combustion or knocking in case of SI engine so the first factor is self ignition temperature of the fuel here we have what we call as abnormal combustion so in the normal combustion the flame is traveling across the combustion chamber without a second flame but whenever the second flame is there and the two flame collides that is what we call as knocking why this is happening because the end mixture is going to reach self ignition temperature and that is starting a new flame and if this uh, self ignition temperature of the fuel itself is higher then the end mixture is unable to reach the self ignition temperature easily and therefore the probability of knocking is going to decrease so uh, yeah, the first thing what we have to do is to use the fuel which are having higher self ignition temperature second thing what we need to do is to decrease the compression ratio now why we, we need to decrease because as we decrease the compression ratio the end mixture will be initially having a lesser temperature and due to compression even though the heat is increasing the temperature is increasing it will not reach easily to self ignition temperature because the initial temperature was less but that is why generally we use uh, lesser compression ratios in uh, SI engines because in SI engines if you use higher compression ratios then it is going to start uh, the knocking very easily because the uh, due to compression itself the temperature of the mixture is higher and then due to the flame the end mixture is uh, very easily it will reach a self ignition temperature and easily a new flame will start that is the reason why we generally use smaller compression ratios uh, in SI engines now uh, third point is initial air temperature and pressure if the initial air temperature and pressure is lesser the probability of end mixture reaching the self ignition temperature is going to 
uh, decrease and therefore the probability of uh, knocking is going to decrease that is we want the initial uh, temperature and pressure of the mixture supplied to the engine to be lower in order to uh, control the knocking next is cylinder wall temperature should be lower that is the cooling uh, system whatever we have provided should work more efficiently why the lesser the temperature of the uh, uh, combustion chamber walls end mixture reaching the self ignition temperature is going to be becoming later because the end mixture will be losing the sheet to the combustion chamber walls which are cooler and therefore the probability of uh, the end mixture reaching the self ignition temperature is going to decrease and that will result in decreasing the knocking in case of SI engines. Next point is the engine speed. The higher the engine speed we know the lesser is the time available for the uh, combustion to happen and here what is happening a flame is traveling second flame is coming and if the uh, speed of the engine is higher we are getting very less time for the flame to travel and therefore before the end mixture uh, reaches their self ignition temperature then the delay period has to overcome there's no that that much time is not available because the speed of the engine is higher and we have very less time for combustion to happen and therefore we don't have the enough time for the end mixture to uh, reach a self ignition temperature overcome the delay period and then start a flame and all all these things to happen and therefore uh, higher the speed of the engines the lesser will be the probability of knocking in case of SI engine and that is the reason why generally the SI engines we prefer to have to a higher speed in generally diesel engines we prefer to that of as lesser speeds but in case of SI engine we prefer to that run in this particular engines at a higher speeds next point is the cylinder Cylinder size. We, uh, so the cylinder size should be smaller as far as possible. Why? Because if the cylinder size is bigger, what happens? Uh, the flame has to travel a longer distance, and as it is traveling, the end mixture is being compressed more and more, and its temperature goes on increasing more and more. That is, the probability of the end mixture reaching the uh, self ignition temperature is going to be higher. That is, uh, the probability of knocking is going to increase. So if you keep the smaller the size of the cylinder smaller the flame travel distance will decrease and that will result in flame uh, travel in a lesser distance and therefore the end mixture is not getting compressed more and therefore uh, the end mixture will not uh, form a new flame that is where we generally have smaller engines in case of SI engines but in diesel engines we prefer to be bigger but in case of a uh, SI engines we prefer to be smaller why because we want to keep the uh, flame travel length to be lesser and that is uh, the reason why we have smaller engines in SI engines and the last point is ignition lag so here we want ignition lag longer why because the flame is traveling over here and the end mixture is getting compressed and the end mixture reach after reaching the self ignition temperature has to remain over there during the time corresponding to ignition lag period if the ignition lag period itself is longer then it has to stay over there for a longer time and by the time your main flame is going to travel across the combustion chamber and consume all the fuel that is the probability of uh, end mixture forming the flame is going second flame is going to decrease and therefore the probability of knocking is going to decrease that is if the ignition lag is longer it is better for uh, avoiding the knocking in case of SI engines so that is about uh, abnormal combustion in case of SI engines thank you hopefully you might have enjoyed the lecture then please do like the video and know your thoughts in comments please do share this video among your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel after subscription you can press the bell icon to never miss the notification regarding our new video